Lord God, I just thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I pray for growth here, but Lord, right now, let us focus on you, the Lord Jesus Christ, the great independence giver, Lord God. You gave us salvation without taxes. You gave us salvation without cost. But the cost came upon you, Jesus. The greatest and most conflict war battlefield that's ever been between you and Satan and death. And yet right now you sit the right hand of the Father victorious, Lord God. Lord, may us as soldiers get up and rise and preach the gospel. Our battle's not done yet. Lord, bless this time in your word. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. We agree. In Jesus' name. So, John, I'm going to say first John. John chapter 1, we're at verse 6. Woohoo! How many more verses do we got? Oh, wow. And there was a man sent from God. Paragraph. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. All right, so the first five verses are about God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Creator. That's important. The light, the light. That's important. You cannot believe in evolution and be saved. But now here's John. The subject now turns in verse 6 to another man. He's sent by God. Now John 3.16. And in the beginning of the gospel, the beginning of what we call salvation, when men rely on works, John 3.16 for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Now that's Jesus, that's not John. Amen. And yet, God sent forth to the nation of Israel a man before Jesus to prepare the nation of Israel for their Messiah. Now when we look at salvation, as we're going through the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's not about the Gentiles not about us. We don't come into the picture unto the book of Acts chapter 8 with the Ethiopian eunuch. We must remember that salvation, we must remember that Jesus, the Messiah of the Jews the gospel is focused on the Jews the Jewish Messiah more so in the book of Matthew you said why didn't we do Matthew but Matthew is Jewish flavor. John is the, the gospel of John is the later gospel and this is where you would get the instruction and the learning of Gentiles being a later book. But still we must look at from the life, from the birth of Jesus to the death on the cross, the primary function of his ministry were to Jews. And the book, the, the book of Acts went out to the Jews and finally, you know what, they're not listening. And God calls a man called Saul. He calls him to be a apostle to the Gentiles. He's preaching to the Jews, and one day he says, You know what? I'm cleansed from the blood of you guys. Henceforth, I'm going to the Gentiles. And that's where we come in the picture, but we cannot get our focus off the Jewish people. And God's not finished with them. They are still and will always be for the Jews. The Jewish people are God's people. So when we set forth John the Baptist, as we are now looking at, we take on the name of Baptist. There's no other Baptist in the Bible in 66 books but John the Baptist. Now we called ourselves Baptist, and I continue the name Baptist, because so far that is a name that still applies to the Scriptures, and yet Baptist is falling away from the Scriptures. A lot of you, most of your Baptist churches today are not correct. They are not biblical. Very few will still hold to the traditions and rights of the Bible believers to be Baptist. So John, a Jewish man, sent by God. Jesus Christ, a Jewish man, sent by God. Now he, his name is John, which is this is not the writer of the Gospel of John. It's two different Johns. John the Baptist is not the Saint John that wrote the Gospel. That would be John the Apostle. Later on we'll look at. He's not a disciple, nor is he an Apostle. 
for some of the ministry of Jesus Christ, he spends it in jail. And then in jail, he gets beheaded and dies. He's the forerunner. Again, this is not the gospel of John the Baptist. Uh, probably someone out there probably imagine teaches that this is a, you know John the, the Baptist. Uh, that's I don't know if they do, but that would be wrong. It's another John. So John means, or the name John, grace or mercy of God. It is God's grace and mercy to the nation of Israel. I am sending some. Jesus is not going to pop up. Boom, here I am. And this gospel written by another John. What grace and mercy of God does, does the gospel of John? Like as I say, when you're reading with Virgil, read the gospel of John with him because okay. it's about mercy and about grace. So... There's John's in the Bible. There's John the Baptist. That's this man here. John the Apostle, which we'll meet later. There's John Mark. That's the writer of the Gospel of Mark. He's got two names, John Mark. And then the high priest, Ken, look at Acts 4, 6. And that is Acts chapter 4, verse 6. Okay. And that is some of the problems. I don't know why people, I guess they want to find a problem in the Bible. In Acts 4, 6. That's some of the problems they have with the Bible that they'll say, well, look, see this, here's a contradiction. By a man would say that this is a contradiction in the Bible, and he would have a name, Philip, Thomas, his last name. How come you can have three names but a person in the Bible can't? You go by religion, Pope John Paul the wait a minute. And he's that's not his real name. And some of the contradictions in the Bible is because the man has two different names in the question. Uh, in Acts 4 6, the other John, and Ennis, the high priest, and Caiaphas and John and Alexander, here's a kinship to the high priest, another John. So when we look at John's in the Bible, we're looking at four individuals. And the Bible says rightly divide. And who's this John? Who's that John? Who's this John? And what's that John? And you can't put two Johns together. You're going to have a messed up scripture. Imagine someone taking John the Baptist and mixing him up with the Apostle John. you got a problem. So John the Baptist. Uh, in John chapter 1 verse 7. In John 1 7. About John. Verse 6. And there was a man. He's a man. Some people don't know what man is. Sent from God. God sent two men into this world for a reason, for a purpose. Yes, I'm just re reverting to say, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, one, to bear witness of the light, capital L, two, that all men through him might believe. So, he's a witness. He is and let me classify this statement that I'm saying by the scripture here. And I'm not picking on anybody. He's a Jehovah Witness. God sent him to be a witness. Now he don't have watchtowers and he's not in a cult. So what does Satan do is we're talking about God the Father in the Old Testament. His name is Jehovah. Jehovah sent a witness. He's Jehovah's Witness of the Messiah. The Jehovah Witnesses do not witness the Messiah and Jesus, who is God, another Jesus. They don't consider him the Messiah. So he's a witness, and what is he a witness of? The light, capital L. That's Jesus Christ. John the Baptist is only going to proclaim the light. 
to the nation of Israel, not Gentiles, not to the church. Attention Israel. You see, the last book in your Bible, Malachi, you just, just open to it if you want to. We're not going there. Malachi, here's Malachi. Malachi closes. You say, unto John the Baptist, unto Jesus, 400 years of silence of God. God had not spoken to the nation of Israel from Malachi to John. 400 years. Shall we do the next part again? Shall we go back and review the Bible? Say, oh, do I have to read the whole Bible? Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Back there. We've already, how many times have we gone there? And yet, how many times does history of the Bible come back and come back and come back? So, in Genesis 1, we know it's the creation of the world and everything we see. But can we look at it as a standpoint as we can put our mind to Israel? In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Right? In the beginning, God created, God made from Abraham a seed from Isaac, Jacob, 12 tribes, and boom, they scattered up. And you can't number them. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. It's darkness, it's dreary, Satan's in power, and the close of the book of Malachi. Malachi leaves Israel with a curse. The last word in Malachi is a curse. Israel, you're darkened, you're, you're following Satan, you're not following me. It's been, how many, this is where it proves the gap theory. I'm not going to pick on people who don't believe on the gap. I mean, it's not a doctrinal thing to fight over. But isn't there a gap between Malachi 4 and the coming of John the Baptist? Absolutely. That gap is 400 years. And in that 400 years, what is Israel? They're dark. They're... What if a Jew died during that 400 years? Where did they go? I don't know. Because there's no temple. Actually, there is a temple. Take that back. There is a temple. But there's no, there's no organization of the priesthood. So here we go. Now watch. Now, it said John was a witness of what? Now let's keep reading. Verse 3. Darkness, verse 2. Verse 3 of chapter 1. And God said, let there be... Well, how does the Gospel of John open up? There's darkness. There's 400 years of silence. And what's the next thing? John, what are you to do? You're to be that light. And we talked about that light in previous studies. That light is Jesus, isn't it? And he's to be a witness of what? The light. What are we to be witnesses? What is that famous great quote out of the book of Matthew? Let our light shine. That's John. Ladies and gentlemen of the seed of Abraham, your Messiah is about to come. Be ready. He's not going to, boing, hi hey, folks, here I am. So when the people reject him, say, listen, and we're going to see according to the scripture, John the Baptist. And that light is Jesus. Now, John was in sin, not Jesus. Men may uh, believe Romans chapter 10, verse 11. John is not Jesus. Well, he's a forerunner of Jesus. John was in his sin. In John chapter 10, verse 11. I mean, Romans 10, 11. I don't know why I said John. Romans 10, 11. This would be John. For the scriptures say it, whosoever believes on him should not be ashamed. And John was not ashamed. That guy, when the, when the religious leaders come up to him, man, he's going to scold them out. Oh, I wouldn't do it. You might offend him. John was not offend, uh, ready to offend, but he offended. 
and verse 14, the same chapter 10. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? John's a preacher. And how shall they preach except he, they be sent? As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they had not all believed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? And that's Isaiah 53. That's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Isaiah 53, if you were to hear a Jew quote that, he would say that Isaiah 53 is about him, and the one doing the persecuting is the, <coughs> excuse me, the Gentiles. No, that's Jesus Christ by God because of man and his sins. So God sent the man to the people, to the Jews. He did not send an angel. Didn't God have a pick from all the God says all the all the stars in heaven, all the angels, he knows every single one of them calls them by name. Could he have not called Michael? Could he have not called Gabriel? Could he have not called any of the ones that show up in trees and toast and whatever people see? Angels, could he have not called any of those angels to come down? And yet he did not send an angel. He sent a man. So when you get into people today, like I said, we're going to nail religions and belief. When you get people today, oh, I've seen an angel. you got to be careful. That angel could have been Satan, 2 Corinthians 11. Because God, I'm not going to limit God. The Hebrews said, whereby we entertain angels unawares. I'm not going to say that God can't send an angel. But that is not his thing. When a man is lost and going to hell, God is not going to send him an angel. He's going to send him a Bible and a man. And he came before Jesus came. Now back to John 1, 7. So we've already shut down many of these people and their beliefs in the world system. I've seen angels. I've never seen an angel. I don't think I've ever seen one. Now, if I entertain an angel unaware, God will show me later on. I believe, may I be very careful to say that I've dealt with some people that I would call the question in my life. But I am not going to definitely say unless I'm in a very secure environment with people I know who trust me to take that the wrong way. Now a lot of times when I hear people say, I've seen an angel, well, first I look at their details, I look at their life, and look at what they're doing. And if it's a worldly life, it's a life that's not following the scriptures yet. No, you haven't. I mean, if you ain't got the right Bible and you start proclaiming this, no, I don't think so. Now, there was a Gentile that saw an angel, but did you read the classification of his life that the Holy Spirit recorded? I don't even make those qualifications. Saved. So, verse 7 again. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L, life, that's Jesus, that all men. So see, there is a possibility for Gentiles. Though the mission of John and Jesus was to the Jews. So God already foreknew. Heard a man, and God doesn't know everything. God already knew that the Jews were going to reject him, so he throws in there all men. That's me. Through him might believe. Again, the witness, a witness tells others. What are we Christians, what are we witnessing? I know how Jesus saved my soul. Now it may not be the same as yours, may not be the same way as yours, but Jesus Christ saves all sinners. Amen. I can't witness. I don't know what to say. Tell them your testimony how you got saved. Now let me forewarn you. I've done that many times now. 
I have told people, I've stood face to face and told someone how I got saved, and they act like one, a couple of them told me I was a liar. Mm. My personal thing. Now, maybe there was a couple details I stretched, or there's a couple details maybe I forgot, maybe I got, you know, mistaken. Okay, those things. But the best thing you got is what did Jesus do for you? That's a witness. Hey, you know, I prayed this time, and my Father in Heaven supplied. I have no fear of death. I have no... The Bible says, these things are written unto you that you may know you have me. I know where I'm going. Do you? And if a person's not saved, they can't answer that question correctly. And with assurance that the Bible gives. And when you bear witness, you are an eyewitness. When you, like I said, when you tell somebody your testimony, and they call you a liar, between you and God, God, you know, I told the best way I could. I hope it was completely honest. And if they don't believe that, are they going to believe God? No. It's so unbelievable sometimes. But here's the thing. But John, he never knew Jesus, though they were cousins. Nowhere in the scriptures does, does before they show up at his baptism, nowhere in the scriptures does it put these two together. Uh, probably some book out there, probably. But not the scriptures. The only time we ever read about Jesus, young is 13 years old when he's in Jerusalem. And remember, John the, ba John the Baptist's father was, was a priest. He would have been at the temple doing the work. But had these two come together, I don't believe they had. The Bible does not record it. Babies were both in the wombs. Yeah, they were in the wombs, but they never knew each other. Mm. He never saw Jesus. As far as the scriptures tell us, they never saw each other until this day. How do you know that John the Baptist didn't know who Jesus was? God had to speak from heaven. God had to send that Holy Spirit down as a dove. John, this is him. To testify. He's never been with Jesus. And he's a type of Christian today because I've never seen Jesus. I never saw Jesus. I have never been with Jesus. But one glad day, I'm going to see Jesus as John saw him. But I'm gonna, unlike John, who's in the Bible, I am going to see the glorified Jesus Christ. John saw that human side of Jesus. I'm going to see Jesus in the clouds. If not, if I die, I'll be absent from this body and present with the Lord. Either way, I'm going to see Jesus in the sky. John didn't see him like that. Verse 8. It's about John. He was not that light but was sent by God to bear witness of that light, capital L, each time. He's not the light. He is not the Savior. He is not the Messiah. And I wonder if there are people, and I've never heard of but I wonder if there are people who put their stock in what John. There's a man in the book of Acts says, you know, I've been baptized by John's baptism. And they took him aside and corrected him. And he got baptized brightly and saved. Uh, so again, notice that light is L, capital L. Not just a light, but the capital L. Again, that's the Genesis 1-3 light. That's Jesus Christ. So that light... It's, a sm it's the small L versus the big L. It's Jesus manifested in the flesh, and I wonder what modern Bible, I don't even care to look. I don't know if they change that capitalization. Mm. Probably some do. I don't look into that stuff. But I'm telling you, there's a possibility if your Bible has a small L for that capital L, they removed it from Jesus. That's one of the things, the classifications that modern Bibles do. Just See, look, you wouldn't notice that big and small L, would you? Uh -huh. It's stuck in your hair now. You know? We read. The, we heard the other day that in, uh, 
a man of, of epileptic seizures. They changed. Uh, no, he didn't. Lunatic, they the lunatic. It to epileptic. The lunatic in the Bible. They changed the epileptic uh, seizures. Oh. No, the, the new Bible. The new Bible. Oh. Instead of lunatic. It says epileptic seizures. When they came off the mountain of transfiguration oh, yeah. and they met the man about the he had a son who was lunatic. Right. He was throwing himself into the water and, and they changed it to epileptic. So we yeah. met an epileptic yeah. woman and the other day. day. And the Bible says, or I guess according to the modern Bible, it's true. She has, she's a lunatic. <laughs> but that's not the case. Because she has epilepsy? No. But the thing, well, the thing that I'm trying to show you is how slick these Bibles are. And all they have to do is just change that big L to a little L. And, well, what's the danger of that? How do they draw pictures of saints? Isn't there like a light aura around them? For anybody. Well, they don't listen. So the light here is a person. The light is a person, the Son of God. When have you ever seen a light alive? You don't. So it's beyond a regular small L light that this light is a person. And that light according to 1 1 is the word capital W known as the capitalization. The light is God in the flesh, the word of God. The light of all light. Now did you know Satan has a light? For everything God, Satan, 2 Corinthians 11 14, we, we mentioned this earlier, 2 Corinthians 11 14. And you will hear this testimony quite frequently. And if you have this experience, you can call the newspapers and it will probably print this story. 2 Corinthians 11, 14. So if God has a light, and I told you, like I said, I don't know, maybe I'm talking a lot. Modern Bible is changing that capital L to little L, and they may not, I don't know, I don't read them. But I'm saying that would be their classification. That would be their orders. 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and no marvel. So don't wonder. This ought to be common knowledge among Christians. But it's not. This is not common knowledge among Christians. For Satan, we know who Satan is, Himself is transformed into an angel of small l. And every time you hear these stories, like I said, I grew up Roman Catholic, this angel came in and it was bright and shiny and I saw this light at the end of the tunnel. You better be careful because look at verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his minister, well, who's the his? Who is the subject of verse 14? Satan. His ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. So there are men and women out there who are ministers of God, proclaimed to be the small l light. And they claim to be right. You see how right I am? You see the light? You right. think? Isn't Jesus light? Isn't our light that shines on top of it? Oh, I let my light shine. And there will be many people, we've met many people, we'll meet many people, and still meet people, I let my light shine. But hate what we're doing. But hate the word of God, you've got the light of Satan. And you have no knowledge of the word of God because Jesus and Paul and all the apostles done the street preaching that we do. But they have light. But there's two lights. There's a capital L and there's a small L. So without checking modern Bible, let me keep saying that because I could be wrong. When I speak of myself, I can be wrong, okay? But if I speak of the Bible, I speak correctly. Because I'm speaking God's word. If their modern Bible is going to change something from Jesus and make him Satan, we know that they do that, correct? Wouldn't it be interesting that small L became the small L in 1 John 1? 
Now you say, Sal, are you going to go home and check them? No. Absolutely. I don't care. I don't want to put poison into my eyeballs. I don't want to put the poison into my heart. I'll just study the real Bible, and if, if they don't, praise God, they don't. But I know in the book of Acts, they changed the name uh, of Joshua and Jesus and changed that. I know they take out the verse in the Bible, the Ethiopian eunuch believing on Jesus. I know they can make a lunatic an epileptic. <laughs> so I can assume, and I'm assuming, and if I'm wrong, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ, and they changed that L in John 1. Because here's a small L of Satan. So when you're dealing with people, I see an angel. Walk carefully. Now don't call them out like a, a liar. Just go to the scriptures. So Satan's the light. Jesus Christ is the light. And I don't know, not yet, but I don't think we will get to. But if you were to study the Antichrist, and you put column A, Jesus, and column B, Antichrist, a and B will be matching all the way down. They both have a father. They both have a city. They both, you know, and I'm not, we're not going to do that. We need to be careful. There are two lights. We need to know the taxes. Be not marveled. There will be people who come up to you and say, Oh, I do like, is it the light or is it Satan's light? And notice how it says angel. People worship angels. New age. Mm. We went to a house one time where we were knocking on doors, over and, and a woman invited us in to, to meet her angels that were hanging out in a li <laughs> Lady, please close that door. I don't want any of them to jump on you. It's new age. So a classification of light. John. The, the Apostle John and the Apostle Paul wants us to know there's two lights. We need to get that. Now the light is at the right hand of the Father. That's Jesus, Acts chapter 1. That light right here in 2 Corinthians 11, 15, he's right now here. In a stone throw of where we are right now, I could probably take you to a to a church and we can sit down and listen to Satan's minister out of that pulpit and probably pick up a Bible and start reading. The Bible says, Be warned of, of men that are in sheep clothing but inside are roaring lions mm -hmm. and wolves. Excuse me. And people, Oh, isn't he great? Not all preachers are going to hell. I mean, going to heaven. They're going to hell, many of them. Because they're Satan ambassadors. They deceive the people. And that light, that light is Jesus Christ in the flesh. John is prescribed before Jesus. He came before that light. That light is coming, John saying. And that light is Jesus in the flesh. Back to John 1.7. So the light has been born. But he has not come unto his public ministry. Jesus is now about to make himself public. He's already been born. 1-7 The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men including Gentiles through him might believe. So that light is to be believed upon. Well, there are many people that believe on the light that we just read in 2 Corinthians. Many will go on the Broadway that leads to destruction. What is Broadway at night? Lit up. Lit up. Mm -hmm. Of signs of all wickedness and sin. But straight is the gate that leads into life, and few that go in. What, what kind of light would you see at a gate in the middle of the night? It'd be these little tiny little things. It'd be one on the right hand, one on the left hand side, usually, to show this is the in between. And yet, the Broadway Satan's light is all artificial. 
And yet the light of God is purely from God. So that light is to be believed upon. Again, we already said in 2 Corinthians, the light has a witness. Satan's light has a witness. Witness of destruction. But they will not tell you who they really are. They will not tell you if you believe their doctrine. You're going to destruction. They are the father of who is the father? The liar, John 8, 44. I'm sorry to tell you, but if you're in the church and that minister is actually of Satan, let's look at John 8, 44. The capital L light is of God. The small L of light fathers John 8:44. Ye are of your father the devil. You know who Jesus is talking to? The religious people in, in Israel. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. How dare he instruct the guy who, who we know by his clothing who he is. Ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you'll do. Why are churches becoming worldly and all that? The lust of, to get the people... The, Paul tells us in, in Romans 7, 7 that that coveting is lust and lust is coveting. So when your church starts showing signs of getting that lustfulness to bring people in by the worldly means, you're going the way of the father and the devil. So let's look out about this father. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. There are men and women in our pulpits that are lying to the people, and their father is Satan, sent by Satan. And everybody thinks just because they're in the pulpit, they're wonderful. Just because they're on the television channel, they're so wonderful, right and wrong, and they're going to be full many that go that Broadway. And the reaction of the people is when Jesus judges them at the great white throne of judgment. But Lord, didn't I do this in your name? Lord, didn't I do this in your name? Didn't I go to church X, Y, and Z? Didn't I follow this man? Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's the shame. That Satan is allowed to use religion of the small L light. And that is the power of Satan. You say, well, why does God allow that? Free will. God does not want machines in it. Oh, we love Jesus. We love Jesus. No. He wants people in heaven. Glory to God, all the things you've done for me, Jesus. Thank you. And I will tell men every once in a while when I preach on the streets in Daytona and say, listen, if you don't love Jesus, you're not going to love heaven. Happy heaven. There's no way. If you don't like us praising the Lord, that's what's going to be happening in heaven. That's right. Around just, the clock. You There's just no won't clock, have. but around the clock. People are going to be praising the Lord, singing and thanking Him all the time. And if you don't want that, you don't want God, you don't want Jesus, you go to hell, but you're not going to enjoy it. Right. Because the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, and all that, you don't get that with Satan. No, no, he no. lies to you. How does he lie to you? And you say, you go, here you go, you're going to bash religions. Okay, here I go with religion. You take whatever religion takes to get to whatever they believe in glorification. And that man is of Satan, 2 Corinthians 11, and John 8, 44. It's a lie. It will be condemned before God and cast off the lake of fire. Whatever they did, whatever they believed. You better know that light. And their preacher will be there with them and they'll be like... Can't see him in darkness. Yeah. He's screaming, and he's not going to care for you then. There are actually preachers today. Only thing they do for the church is they get up and preach Sunday morning. And that's it. They don't do anything else all week long. Well, that guy's supposed to be a shepherd. And there are people that will give their all. They will kill themselves, whatever that religious leader is. Anybody. 
You want to be on television? Uh, listen, I, I dealt with men in the prison. This is a bad place because Oprah Winfrey and uh, Joyce Myers are in God of the prison. Yes. They worship them. Not you Jesus. can't dare speak against yeah. I, I have showed them. Put no authority on the woman. Yeah, She's yeah. not deserved it. And they look at me like, I don't care. Yeah. In Timothy, it tells the woman's not to observe authority over a man, and we're just not quoting for man, but you can read into the Bible. We've been five years in Daytona Beach preaching every Saturday we, we can try to be. Well, you've been here Well, we've been on there five. She? Oh, preach. So, the light has a witness. I witnessed the testimony of Jesus Christ saved my soul on April 21st, 1987. I could even be wrong on the date. How's that? I could be. I don't know. And after that, I was baptized. But I was saved. I was there that afternoon. I was there at that coffee table. I was there when the Bible read to me. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. That is capital L. We've had people come up to us and they show us their cross. Yeah, or their tattoo. Or their tattoo. Or they'll tell us some ridiculous... And listen, according to the Bible, it's a ridiculous story. I don't say it to them. Think it's I like Styler walking through Walmart and, and pointing to his patch on his shirt. <laughs> I'm a Christian. See, I'm a I don't Christian. wear it to, to... You know, I don't wear doodads to show I'm a Christian. I wear doodads because it starts conversation and opens doors. Oh, yeah, that and woman like, and like we don't wear crosses because cursed is the man who... Hangs on the tree. Hangs on the tree. And that becomes an idol. I don't want to wear that cross is an idol. It's like it's I like wear it's like, oh, your dad was electrocuted and let's and you know, or electric chair. What if Jesus was on electric chair? It's you know? like showing him an electric chair. Yeah. But what, the thing is, you're gonna wear an electric chair on your When you belt. wear a cross the way you look at it. that identifies as an idol and God oh. says you're not to do it. So the next thing well, Satan has his witnesses, whatever their church tells them. And that's another thing you'll hear. My church says. My church, yeah. Make sure that's working. You're doing my church, this wrong. Well, my pastor. Make sure it's doing My pastor. Oh. Oh, no, what's the Bible say? There are people, and you ask Tracy, I started saying, there are people come up to me. Well, that's not our church to do. That's not in the Bible. I'll tell them right, right flat now, you don't know your Bible. Because you don't. All right, so what that, you're doing isn't in the Bible, they tell us. And we're like, it's exactly the seriously? Preaching in the so the next thing about that light, again, it has ministers. That light has, there are men and women all over the world that are in pulpits and at picnic tables, wherever they meet, whether it be an oil drum, that love the Lord, serve the Lord, and are purpose from the Lord, are sent by the Lord, by the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ all over the world. And they have worse conditions than what we have right now. I could bring some pictures of the forest where they got big leaves in their, their roof. And when they get the rainy season, there's no more roof. So, the small L has ministers. Reverend such and such, Dr. So and so, PhD, the holy uh, MyName.com, MyName.org. Your number, your name is flashed across the screen of the thing. I wrote these books. Look who I am. I'm a layman. Look at it. Look at me. Look at my title. Look who I am. John the Baptist never showed up with any title at all. He showed up preaching to people wearing a, a, a leather girdle and eating locusts. He would not have been allowed in your Baptist churches today. They say there'll be no spitting allowed in the church. And again, the light, capital L, is to be believed. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You've got to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. Romans 10. John chapter 1. For all. And the small L is to be believed. And we, like I said, we go into multitudes, multitudes, multitudes. Now, Revelation 20, verse 12. What about works? What about I work to be saved? My ministry, my minister, my church tells me I ought to work. 
to be saved. I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got bees, I've got a prayer, I've got to get on a mat, I've got to face this, I've got to kiss this, I've got to kiss that, I've got to obey this, I can't offend this person, I can't take the Bible to this person. I've been in, I've been in Bible believing churches. I brought the, the Bible to the guy and said, listen, you're wrong. Get out of here. So what faith, what is work based if whatever your small L teaches that you have to do. Revelation 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead. That's a great... I'm not ever going to die. If I die, I'd be absent from this body and present with the Lord. And one day at the rapture, he's taking my body up and that body's going to be revived. It's going to be made well. It's going to be made new. So people of religion, first of all, you're dead. Small and great. Whether you die or not die. Stand before God. You want a, a laugh for that verse right there? I mean, serious laugh. How about this one? I, I, I'm not changing the Bible. I saw the atheist, small and great, stand before God. A man that doesn't believe in God is going to stand before God one day. Atheism is a religion. You have to believe it. I dealt with an atheist. I said, listen, do you believe in religion? Absolutely not. I said, do you have faith that there's no God? He couldn't answer me. And he wouldn't answer me. you got to believe there's no God. That's faith, my friend. That's a church. Now, in fact, they now have atheist churches. And they'll open up their hymns and say, open up the hymn number zero and let's start singing <laughs> Thank whoever, whatever. I don't know, but they do have atheist churches. But atheists all are going to stand before God one day. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book. Judge not me, he be dead. I'd love to hear him say that to God. Okay, fine. I'll judge you now. <laughs> According to their works. Do you realize we preach salvation not of works, and yet people believe their works will save them and they will be judged from their works? Now, I'm talking about the church age right now. We're not getting the tribulation. We're not getting the Old Testament. I'm talking about right now from the time that Christ arose from, that cross, from the grave to the rapture. How anybody can think that what they do is better than, better what, Jesus. than what Jesus did. Is so, again, I am picking on religions as far as work. Okay? I got beads. I got statues. I got magazines. I got church attendance. I gave money. I got charities. I walked this line. I climbed this mountain. I faced east. I faced west. I stuck my head in a hole in the ground. I did whatever, whoever taught me whatever to do to get to my great monk Joe. I crossed my legs and had to take an aspirin because of pain. I had to do everything, yogurt and yoga and everything. All those are going to be judged one day. I just absolutely didn't believe nothing. I was an idiot. You're going to be judged by those persons. I'm going to choose to reject and just go on in life with a happy little thing. And when we die, that's it. Happy glory to God. That's works. Anything but the faith of Jesus Christ is works. There you go. Aren't you glad that eternity is now have begun? There's no clocks here at the Great White Throne Judgment. There's Time stopped. Because you can imagine how long it would take from the first person that shows up on this planet ends up the Great White Throne Judgment to the last person. You know how long it's going to be? You know how long it's going to be Catholics that name off all their sins and all the times they went in the booth and all the times they took the beads, all the prayers, all the statues and all the Jehovah Witnesses junk and all this and all the Jim Jones and all the David Koresh's and all the stuff like that and all the TV evangelists and all the women sitting on the table don't know what they're talking about talking and all the TV for are all going to stand before the Great White Stone Judgment one day. That's right. Well, Jerry Springer told me this and, you know, Dr. Phil told me this and my doctor told me this and all their works. I didn't even name a percentage of all the words. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell drew up the dead which were in them. So when you go to hell, that ain't it. You're going to stand before God. 
pain in hell today is going to stand before God. And they were judged, every man according to their works. Now why do we not preach a work salvation? And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. You don't want to die that second death. Now here we go. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, period. I prayed to this idol. I was an American. I, 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 me, myself, and I. Did he? That's how Satan talked. Did he ever receive Christ Jesus as his Savior? Well, Lord, let me look at a book of life. His name's not in here. Take your religion. Get, go, get out of my faith. Go jump in the lake. But Lord, didn't I, didn't I, didn't I depart from me? You work as iniquity. I never knew you. Now, how does he not know you? Your name is not in the book. Lazarus went to be in Abraham's bosom, but the rich man went into hell. We don't know his name. And if God so loves everybody, why is it people in hell have no name? And yet my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's the difference between religions. The small L will drive you this way with everything that Satan tells you to do. And Satan is everything. He's a scientist. He's an evolutionist. He's a, a Satan in this. He's an atheist. He's a religionist. Sociologist. He's a Hollywoodist. He's a televisionist. He's an actress. <laughs> He's all of it. He's anything but that light, capital L. So what must I do to go to hell? Reject that capital L light. And do anything and everything, uh, whatever else, the list is wrong. As long as you do not get your name that lands much of light by the light, capital L, by your faith and belief in Jesus Christ, you will go into the lake of fire the second day. And then when you go to God, say, me, myself, and I, and everything that I, good I am. That was God's name to Moses. I am. Depart from me, work as iniquity. I never knew you. In all reality, like Tracy said, I, I, I come to learn that. When you stand before Jesus Christ and still got those nail-pierced hands in eternity, and you say that your Buddha, your Mary, whatever it is, is more important than those nail-pierced hands, you ought to go to hell. Because I don't want you in my heaven. Because you're not going to worship Jesus. And we're going to give all glory to God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Jude 1.8. Right before Revelation. Jude 1 8. And we're, we're talking about that other light. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignitaries. Dignitaries are your, your, your rulers of your government, and they speak bad of them. Careful, talk radio. But Boy, this is so much in Jew. Where to go back and put our foundation on? Oh man. Verse four, I guess. For there are certain men crept in unawares. And if we start a church here, there will be somebody who will creep in. And we won't know. And he'll look like somebody who's righteous. Does that sound familiar? Who were before of ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. If you call our 1-800 number for $5, we'll give you this rag. Oh, yeah. 
this rag was put on the streets of Jerusalem and for ten dollars more we can give you a handkerchief that we blew our nose on. Send, send, send your money into our ministry. Send, send, send your money into our ministry. We will not stop singing until we get a thousand dollars today. That's Satan. That's Satan. That's on the television dial. I saw that at the hospital. I was watching television. Couldn't stand it. And denying the only Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, who does that? Jehovah Witnesses. Yes. When I walk up to them and I quote what, what uh, Thomas said, my Lord, my God, they run. If a church you want to check out, if it's a good church for you, ask them who the Lord Jesus Christ is. If He's not Lord God, leave. If He's not the Savior of that church, leave Him. And then find out what must I do for works for salvation. And if it's Jesus Christ alone, stay. Oh, you got to do what the pastor says. You can't upset the people. Leave it. Oh, here's, here's a prayer book. No. I don't need a prayer book. They try to lock you into a pledge or a tie. Pledge and nothing. thing. Don't ever pledge. Oh, yeah. I, I have heard. Yeah, I've, I've known people who gone to church, made a pledge, left the church, and the church sued them to get their pledge. Yeah, the shifty thing. Oh yeah. So, just because they hang a shingle outside and says church, there are Jesus Christ churches, and there are satanic churches. And they could be any denomination. Listen, you can call yourself a community church and still love the Lord and be proper and be known in heaven by God. I wouldn't find out with a Catholic church, though. So. Right. So, that's that. Mm -hmm. It's about Satan. about his church. Sit down.